Dr. Kuo, sir, uh, can you kindly start the session? Yes, Professor, we are ready. Shall we start, sir? Yes, yes, you can start. Yeah, very good morning to the respected dignitaries, faculty members, research scholars, and student participants from the various reputed institute across the country. We will start this program with the blessing of Almighty. Now, our girls going to sing the prayer song. Ganayakaya Ganadaivataya Ganadakshaya Dimahi Guna Shariya Guna Manditaya Guneshanaya Dimahi Guna Ditaya Guna Dishaya Guna Pravishaya Dimahi Gadantaya Vapratundaya Gauri Tanaya Dimahi Gajeshanaya Bala Gajeshanaya Bala Chandraya Sri Ganeshaya Dimahi On this beautiful morning, on the behalf of Institutions Innovation Council, and Siddharth Institute of Engineering and Technology. I'm Nisha Priyadashini, as, as Assistant Professor. It's privileged to welcome each and every one of you to this brainstorming session on the Impact Lecture Session sponsored by MHRDS Innovation Cell AICTE New Delhi and organized by Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, SciTech, Puttur, Andhra Pradesh. We extend our heartfelt Gratitude to MHRTS Innovation Cell AICTE New Delhi, who sponsored this online seminar. Also, we are thankful to the eminent speakers who are our resource persons, our college management, and the participants for showing the incredible interest. Now, I request Dr. R. Prem Kumar, sir, Professor of ECE Department, SciTech, coordinator of this event. Please present the welcome address. Welcome, sir. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Respected chairman, respected chief guest, our beloved principal, cherished faculty members, dear participants, good morning to all of you. With the blessings of Almighty, I feel happy and proud to welcome you all for this impact lecture sessions on 22nd June 2022. I am privileged to welcome our beloved keynote speaker of today's program, Mr. Murusuli Chalwan Karunanidhi, Engineering Manager, Intel, Malaysia. I heartily welcome to you, sir, with your presence is making us to feel very proud. And I and also I will respect, uh, I, I welcome to our uh, uh, chief guest uh, of the program, Dr. N. Kumuda, ma'am, as well as uh, Dr. N. Amut, Amuta, ma'am, from IIT Pata. And uh, with due respects, I extend my warm welcome to our respected principal, Dr. K. Chandrasekhar Reddy, who has been a role model to all of his, towards his hard work and dedication. Welcome to you, sir. Next time, happy to welcome our sister principal, Dr. M. Janadhanu Raju, sir. Welcome to you, sir. Next, I welcome to our res respected president of IIC, Dr. P. Atrekamla, ma'am. You have a you have given a great opportunity and support to and proper guidance to organize this uh, seminar in a, in, a, in a great way. Welcome to you, ma'am. Next, I heartily welcome all other heads of the departments uh, for their valuable presence at this great moment. I also would like to welcome our faculty members from the various departments of our college to this wonderful program. I express my best wishes to all the participants who are going to acquire more knowledge and to do well towards their goal by attending this program. I ensure you all that this program will be profitable for all in every aspects. With due affections, I welcome, I would like to welcome my dear faculty members who have been worked as a team with the spirit 
involvement and enthusiasm to organize this program in an efficient manner. Once again, I welcome you all connected here. Have a pleasant day. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the great start. It gives me immense pleasure in inviting our honorable chairman, sir, Dr. K. Ashok Raju Garu, who is the educationalist, industrialist, visionary, and above all, a great human being to give presidential message and address this vibrant gathering with this valuable message. Welcome, sir. Yeah. Good morning to everyone. And uh, thank you, all uh, chief guests and keynote speakers, principal, um, head of the department, faculty members, and the participants. Very good morning to you all. Uh, and uh, really, uh, I think it will add some value to your knowledge. Thanks to AACTE uh, for sponsoring this. So play all the very best for uh, participants and uh, organizers. So thank you very much. Have a nice time. Thank you, sir. Now I request our beloved HOD of ECE, convener of this event, Dr. P. Ratnakamla, ma'am, HOD of ECE department, president of IIC, to give the inaugural address. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Uh, our respected uh, keynote speakers and uh, the resource persons of today's event, uh, Mr. Mursal Selvan Garu, Dr. N. Kumuda, Dr. N. Amita Madam, uh, our beloved chairman uh, and res our respected principals, Dr. K. Chandrasekhar Reddy Garu and the principal of SISTEC, Dr. N. Janardhan Raj Garu, all the participants and students, a very good morning to one and all. So at the outset, I, I congratulate the Dr. R. Prem Kumar for uh, arranging this session on uh, uh, under IAC as impact lecture sessions on the topic of patent searching and patent drafting. And I, I thank the management and our principals for uh, allowing us to conduct this session. And nowadays, as we all know, many projects were done by all of us, by all the faculty and the students at various levels. But there are certain uh, few projects which are of uh, very importance and we just leave them as it is. So without knowing what to do further, where to be implemented and all. But in certain cases, where is minute things where they're, where they're being patented and then finance is being generated from them. So uh, as a faculty, we should know uh, after doing the projects and all, whether my work can be patented or not? If yes, what is the procedure involved in patenting this content, what I have uh, found out? And uh, finally, to be getting patented, what is the procedure involved? So all this, most of the faculty, we do not know. So as a result of that, we thought in our department, it would be better to arrange this session for all the faculty members. And we moved ahead. And uh, thank you, uh, MHRD's Innovation Cell AACT for sponsoring this and making this event live. And I hope all the participants will get benefited from this particular session. And I thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your valuable speech. It's my pleasure to invite Dr. M. Janathana Raju, sir, Principal, Siddharth Institute of Science and Technology to please address the gathering. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you, Madam. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, I congratulate the Department of ECE and Siddharth Institute of Engineering and Technology for providing such a wonderful session to the students and faculty to make them aware of, of about the innovations and patents. I wish you all the success. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Let me now take the privilege to invite Dr. K. Janathana Chandrasekhar Reddy, sir, principal of Siddharth Institute of Engineering and Technology, to please address the gathering. Welcome, sir. Very good morning to all. Thank you, madam, for inviting us. And uh, honorable chairman, sir, and uh, respected principal of CISTEC, and HOD of EC Ratnakamla Garu, and coordinator Prem Kumar Garu, and chief guest today, Mursali Selvan Garu, and all the 
honorable research persons who are going to present about the patent searching, patent drafting. I think we are all aware that we know we are doing the work, but we are not in a position to get the patent, how to apply the patent, how to get the patent, all this is needed for our faculty. I appreciate and congratulate the Institute Innovation Cell and the Department of ECE for arranging such a program. And I wish you all for all the participants. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Always your words is motivate us. Now, I call upon Dr. T. Srilata, ma'am, Professor of ECE Department, SciTech, to introduce our chief guest. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Very good morning to one and all present here. I feel privileged to introduce our today's chief guest, Mursoli Selvan Karnanidhi Garu, manager, Intel, Malaysia. He completed his Bachelor of Engineering in Electronics and Communication in 2005 from Anna University, Chennai. He has 15 years of experience in technical leadership, SOC development, IoT, M2M, DSP, audio video product algorithms, embedded software development, project and business management for the world's most respected semiconductor companies from USA, China, UK, South Korea, and Malaysia. He headed embedded and IoT technical delivery team with great learning in building long-term client relationships, acquiring new customers, and also includes maintaining and expanding relationships with strategically important customers from various domains like semiconductor, automotive, public safety, healthcare, industrial automation, and participated in various smart city initiatives. He also managed the business with value of $10 million revenue generation per year and 700 plus engineers from various teams in the semiconductor domain. He involved in the projects like functional electrical power and performance validation for 10 nanometers SOC development. Low power audio engine, FW development for Bay trial Intel Autumn processor and DSP audio subsystem firmware development for mobile SOC and Adobe's flashlight and flash player plug in development on Android devices and so on. Thank you for giving opportunity to introduce such a great personality. Thank you, sir. Now I, heard, I hand over the, over the session to Nisha. Thank you, ma'am. We will now hand over the session to our chief guest and keynote speaker of this inaugural session, Mr. Murasuli Selvan, manager, Intel Malaysia. Welcome, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot for, for inviting me here. Um, I, I would like to share my screen. Can you, can you give me a host option? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can able to see Muras. Okay. But uh, if it is uh, full screen, it will be better. Oh, I'm going on the full screen. Let me stop sharing. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can able to see that. Okay, sure. Um, thank you so much once again uh, for the opportunity. Um, so I think today's world, uh, there are a lot of innovation, a lot of uh, you know findings and in, in inventions happening across the globe. Um, so as part of this session, I just wanted to make sure that I'm giving some context on. Um, how, how much it is important from a patent perspective, how much it is important for our industry, how much it is important for um, um, for, a, for any professional who comes into industry, right? Uh, um, say, um, 
So before I move into the importance of it, I just want to touch upon uh, what is pattern and how is it you know reliable or how is it being used in the, in the industry. So pattern generally it gives us a um, you know opportunity to to prevent or to to have an exclusive right for your for your inventions, and it is also you know way of protecting your your ideas and 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 findings, right? So it gives us an opportunity to. Uh, to to do license um, uh, in the in the future, right? So uh, there, so in the, in the upcoming sessions, there will be um, you know uh, people who will be discussing in detail how to write, how to search, all those things. But um, so in general, for any innovation, um, uh, any innovation, there is a there is a problem statement across our our industry, across our lifestyles, right? So um, whichever industry you are going into, be the innovation is going to be very key element in in in, in terms of in, in industry so now um so typically uh, how the innovation process works right um so uh, we will have um, any problem statement take it in any problem statement there will be a multiple brainstorming sessions thinking thought process going on you know uh, that that may vary from uh, from uh, company to company industry to industry then besides to that, um, you know, we will also have external, uh, you know, external um, uh, impacts into the innovation process. Then out of that innovation process, we will be getting a solution. Now, uh, it cannot be, you know, boxed into a simple uh, you know, box here. Uh, it, there are a lot of, um, you know, elements into this innovation process. So potentially our thought process, our thinking needs to be changed. That is going to be uh, you know, solving some of the engineering problems. That's going to be a novel idea to be, uh, to be patented, right? Um, so in general, uh, how's the, how, how the industry, um, you know, how industry operates, uh, what is the industry, uh, what is the industry statistics? Uh, you know, you can see though there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, ideas, um, ideas being, uh, you know, discussed and and unwritten ideas. Then there will be a uh, you know only portion of that ideas as being submitted and post portion of that being executed. And then you can see very minimal amount of you know numbers uh, as a, as a successful you know product into the industry. Now, um, so so which means that there are a lot of ideas being you know left left out in the middle of this process. So the perseverance for your ideas to, uh, you know, is very, very important when you are getting into, a, uh, you know, innovation and, and patenting your ideas in uh, be it industry, be it academia, it plays a very important role uh, to persevere your ideas and thoughts and, and pivot whenever there is a failure, don't, don't lose it. Um, you know, pivot from there, pivot your learnings and then take it forward further, right? So, just to give you some some real examples, what happened in the in the 1945 and and, and towards that, right? So in general, there is a pattern for pattern, or there is the 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 so every multiple problems might have a similar solution that may come from uh, you know different industries. Let's say your uh, your academia problems might have been executed in some other industry, some other industry problem, medical industry problem might have been solved in uh, in agriculture industry. So there has been a there has been a multiple you know um, examples to prove that. Right. So if you look at this example in 1945, somebody uh, you know file a patent. Um, you know, to to remove the, uh, the the core core part of the capsicum, right? So the very basic fundamental here: um, issue a force um, air, slowly rise the air pressure, then release it suddenly. You are going to extract the the in, internal seed of this uh, you know, capsicum, right? So it has been patented. Then, but if you look at the next interesting thing, after around um, um, twenty plus years, right? Uh, or, or, or you, you can see the same idea, the same methodology. It is it is being patented to remove the cells from the um, from the nuts that are nuts, right? So the interesting, much more interesting is after twenty seven years, there is a one more patent filed that is to identify the 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 diamonds you know quality. Um, so. The same same principle, you know, um, flow the air into the diamond and suddenly release the pressure. If it is breaking, then the diamond is a uh, is a origin is not a original one. So uh, you can imagine that the same methodology, same solution being applied in a different industries, 
and that's what I, I just wanted to give this an example that your your innovations your thought process should be you know should be beyond your industry beyond your uh, you know um, uh, profile uh, so that you can learn from various industries you can apply that learnings into your industry to solve your own problems right so so that's the you know that's a simple example which i want to you know share it um so uh, you know you you can see how uh, creativity from one domain is bringing in uh, results in other domain right so so uh, keep keep going with your uh, thought process keep exploring on the other hand if you look at today in the semiconductor since i am from a semiconductor industry i just want to take an example of semiconductor industry um so uh, today so today if you look at um what the semiconductor industry takes right um you can see how many a uh, percentage of uh, you know being patent being filed by the companies like intel and, and applied materials and micron you can see there are huge rewards being paid for our uh, for our employees when they file a patent right so it plays a very very important role to strengthen the company's value right uh, and in, in the other hand that is going to be an asset for you know uh, taking your company to the next level and it will it will it will bring you um, uh, bring you to the top position in terms of your competitiveness you know against your competitors right so just wanted to give some examples of you know how uh, how the different industries how the major companies these are the top 15 companies in the semiconductor industry how they are they are they are they are splitted in terms of their patent filing so in industry or in academia everywhere the the, the, the ideas and thought process are very very important so um so if you look at what's the importance right so it, it provides a it provides a real value for your business it, it provides a real, uh, you know, real benefit uh, for your employees to retain them into your company because you're going to reward multiple things for the, for the, for the patent, uh, you know, providers, a patent uh, person who files the patent. So, um, you know, so I just wanted to, you know, touch base that any industry, so you, you, you can see today, these are the major, uh, you know, industries uh, which are in peak, be it a semiconductor today, every, everyone in the, in the, in the industry, uh, every human in the world need a semiconductor you through your mobile phone tablets laptop and and uh, some, uh, you know your medical devices everywhere semiconductor plays an important role and then there are a lot of mobility like autonomous driving and electric vehicles and you know, for the for the energy reservation side and then there is a communication spectrums like 5g iot wi-fi 6 um, you know wi-fi 6 there are a lot of industry from a communication aspect and then on the other hand there are ai machine learning and data analytics and cloud systems you know because we are all virtually connected today so any industry you can you can get into any industry or you can look for an ideas and problem statement from any of these industries you know to to bring your uh, you know patentable ideas and patent it right so um so th this is this is something which i which i want to you know share uh, from uh, from my experience that um you know bring your ideas don't don't leave it uh, when it when it hits the failure pivot it from there and persevere persevere your ideas to throughout the um, you know throughout the journey so that you can make it successful right? yeah thank you for the opportunity um, and i would like to uh, you know, um, wish you guys a great day today for your uh, you know upcoming sessions Thank you, sir. Now I call upon Darshin Madhavi, Assistant Professor, ECE Department, cited to give the vote of thanks. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, a very good morning to all gathered here. I am Darshin Madhavi, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering from Kitab Institute of Engineering and Technology. It's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on the occasion of online impact lecture session sponsored by MHRD, Ministry of Human Resource Development, Innovation Cell, AICPE, New Delhi. Let me first of all start by giving glory to the Almighty God for starting today's occasion with good beginning. I, on behalf of that group of institutions and the entire fraternity of management here, extend very hearty gratitude to all the speakers for gracing your crucial work and sharing with us your opinion today. I want to express my sincere gratitude to the keynote speaker of the event, Mr. Murusali Selvan Karunanidhi, manager at Intel from Malaysia, to grace this occasion and enlighten all of us with innovative talks. 
sir rightly stressed and talked about what is patent, how to be patented, and what is innovation, importance of patent in industry, how to explore with our own thoughts. Own thoughts. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your motivated talk. Okay, young research scholars. Thank you very much, sir. I would take this opportunity to especially thank our director, Dr. K. Ashok Rajagaru, for his unfaltering support and confidence in us. He is the backbone of our institution and the guiding force for every new step forward. Thank you, sir. I further extend to express my deep regards to our Siddharth group of institution principals, Dr. K. Chandrasekhar Redigaru and Dr. M. Janardhan Rajagaru for being a constant motivator and guiding force in all our endeavors to excel in the field of education. Thank you, sir. I also thank our Vice Principal, Dr. P. G. Gopinath Garu, Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Siddharth Institute of Engineering and Technology, for his solid support and timely monitoring in every aspect as we go. It is your appreciation and what that enthuses us in all the efforts. Thank you, sir. I extend my gratitude to the today's event, President of IAC, Institutions Innovation Council and Head of the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Dr. P. Ratnakamala Garu, Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Siddharth Institute of Engineering and Technology, for awakening the passion and desire to support us as a leader to reach the goal of success. Your constant encouragement has helped us in the best way. Thank you, ma'am. Final thank note to the heart and core of the today's event, convener Dr. R. Prem Kumar, Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering at Siddharth Institute of Engineering and Technology, for constant efforts to bring out this online impact lecture sessions sponsored by MHRD's Innovation Cell, AICTE, New Delhi, in well organized way. And we are expecting further more innovative events. Thank you, sir. Once again, I thank you all for connecting here. I assure that you all get benefited from today's talk. Have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now we are immediately going for the session one about the patent searching. Now I call upon Dr. I. Sheikh Arafat, Professor of ECE Department, to give the introduction about Chief Guest. Welcome, sir. The mic is yours. Thank you, ma'am. It's my privilege to introduce our resource person, N. Kumuda, ma'am. Engineer N. Kumuda is currently working as a woman scientist and the Department of Science and Technology India at IIT Patna, Bihar. Also, she is one of the designated partner and pattern analyst in Mass Research Solution, LLP, Madurai. She had completed her BE, ECE, and MA Optical Communication from Government College of Engineering, Burgur, and AC College of Engineering and Technology, Kar Ekudi, on 2004 and 2007, respectively. Also, she had submitted her PhD thesis and her quality improvement program at Thayarajar College of Engineering, Madurai. She had a teaching experience of around 10 years and three years in industry. She has been recognized as a chartered engineer by Institute of Engineers, India, and also featured in the DST booklet of 75 women scientists achievers released by Honorable Minister, Dr. Jijendar Singh, on March 8, 2022. She was being an active member in various professional societies like IEEE, ISTE, IEI, IETE, etc. She had published her research works in various SCA indexed and Scopus indexed journals and international conferences. She was one of the recipients for travel grant from IEEE WIE Society on 2017. She is the acting reviewer in various Scopus Index journals. She has undergone one year training as a women scientist, C of Kiran IPR of DST at Pattern Facilitating Center Technology, Information and Forecasting and Assessment Council an autonomous body of DST, New Delhi. She herself filled three patents in India and one pattern in US. She completed various WIPO courses related to IPR field. She had 
experience related to pattern searching in various databases, pattern filling and drafting. She had delivered various talks related to technical subjects, IPR related lectures, and also with other topics such as role of RTA in higher education. It is organized by Central Information Commission, New Delhi, and funding opportunities for STEM projects in India, etc. Thanks for giving this opportunity to introduce such an eminent personality. Now I hand over the session to Nisha, madam. Thank you, sir. Now, immediately we are hand overing the session to Dr. N. Kumudra, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. Good morning to all. Uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You are audible, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you for introducing me. And uh, also, I would like to uh, thank Asipta Institute of Engineering and Technology for giving me an opportunity to deliver this lecture. Uh, and uh, and a special thanks to Dr. Pentmo for uh, inviting me as, uh, as one of the speaker to this uh, session. So uh, I think I can uh, uh, share my screen. And if my screen is visible, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sure, that is visible, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, uh, today's session, the first morning session, uh, I'll be taking about the topic related to pattern searching. So before going to this pattern searching, as per the request of uh, Dr. Prem Kumar, uh, let me give some introduction about the IPR, basic of IPR as well as the pattern. And then I'll be going for this pattern searching. Um, so this is the outline of my today's session. Uh, so let me give an introduction about this IPR and pattern and I'll be explaining the basic pattern difficulty criteria in India. And I'll be explaining what can be patented and who can apply and uh, how and where to apply in India and the forms which are the other procedures which are related to pattern filing. And uh, so the, this I can take it for uh, half an hour as per the request of uh, Dr. Prem Kumar sir. And then let me go to the my current topic of pattern searching of this particular session. Uh, so I'll be uh, giving some introduction of this pattern searching and the types of pattern searching as well as with the examples. So uh, let me start this session by having some introductions uh, to IPR. So uh, why we are going for an IPR? So what do you mean by IPR? So I can say that this IPR is the intellectual property rights. So uh, everyone will be interested to protect our rights. So uh, this, can, this protection can be either in terms of a registered document uh, as per our uh, normal purchase of the building or any other uh, movable thing. So uh, immovable and non-movable thing. So similarly, we are having this IPR, intellectual property rights. Here we are protecting the intangible property. Intangible property refers to the property that has been arises from the intellectual of human. So in order to protect, so actually the intellectual of human is a more variable thing. And in order to protect that intellectual property, we are having this uh, IPR. So I, I can see that uh, in world there are uh, totally eight IPRs. It has uh, eight divisions. Uh, so once the idea was generated by the creator, it can be of any forms. Like it can be of pattern, copyright, trademark, industrial design, geographical indication, semiconductor, IC layout design, plant variety, and former rights as well as the trade secret. So there are uh, seven plus one I have given us. Uh, so there are total eight IP in in, uh, in the world. So uh, this season, I think I will be mainly focusing on this uh, pattern. Apart from that, I, I, uh, I realized that you can also understood the copyright trademark and the industrial design. So geographical integration is also there uh, the, for a group of community producing some IPs over there. 
and then a semiconductor ic layout design i can see that in india this act has been established in 2000 but for the past 22 years only uh, two uh, ic layout design was been uh, registered and it was granted so now the uh, for the past two years uh, it, the number of uh, filing in ic layout design is said to be increasing uh, though it was under process for a final stage so this semiconductor ic layout design is a new emerging technique uh, where the people from electronics and communication engineering background can do this one and this is one of the current topic also and this is also said to be not other to much people more people and then uh, i can say that the plant variety and the former rice so in the world this ip was there but only with the plant variety protecting the plant variety particularly for the agriculture field the um uh, generation of the seeds uh, to have uh, more production um, or no more uh, incubation and, and apart from this uh, there is a farmer right so this was the only the special thing which was added in the uh, indian ip uh, so in order to preserve the farmers uh, they had included this farmer rights along with the plant variety so this was the special thing in india so we can see only the farmer rights only in the indian ip not in the other countries and other is the trade secret uh, trade secret actually it indicates that uh, what is not to be disclosed can be come under this trade secret what to be disclosed can be come under the patent so there is a difference so patent is what we are disclosing and the trade secret is what we want not to disclose so these are certain basic uh, ip in the world and uh, we can say that this ipr is not a new concept and uh, uh, since i can show you the figures in the right side uh, so we can see there are two images so the top is the um, prajadeshwara temple that can be seen in tanjavur uh, uh, in tamil nadu so uh, we are uh, uh, this uh, prajadeshwara temple was been built by this raja raja solan and uh, the speciality of this temple was that uh, the shadow of the temple tower will not fall on the ground even at the noon time so this seems to be a novel feature or this to be a special to this particular architect of this building so uh, this Uh, temple and you can also see the uh, name of this architect that was engraved in the engraved in the stone uh, which was placed before the temple so it indicates that uh, this arch the intellectual property of this arch Here we can see the uh, Rajput Empire flag. Uh, so I can say that this is an identity. Uh, so I can say that this is an one of the identity of an uh, of that empire. So it can be in order to identify this empire with their having their flag. So it can be saying that uh, we can say this as a trademark nowadays. So this was the thing. Uh, so I can say that this is not a new concept. So uh, IPR it has to be protected. So why we want to protect this one? in order to restrict others from stealing and uh, and infringing we are uh, going to protect that ip ip is the intellectual property that is arises from our intellectual of uh, humans uh, so there are many types of ip uh, particularly we are now in this session we are going to the pattern so on before that uh, i can say that uh, in order to get the ip there are certain procedures that has to be that are followed in all over the world and uh, this procedure is common to all the ips so first we are creating an idea and after that we are executing in a experimental way and then uh, we have to search it whether it was already there or not 
if it was not there in existing if it was not uh, in the existing or prior uh, scenario then we can go for a documentation documentation is that uh, we are making it in a drafting we are drafting the purpose or the features of this uh, ip in a papered way and then we are making it in a filing in a particular uh, ip office and after filing there will be a publication as you all are aware that uh, uh, after submitting a journal paper in a journal and uh, after reviewing it will be published but uh, this was special in the pattern so uh, actually after filing it will be published automatically and after that examination will be taking place so it is just contrary to the paper uh, journal or conference publication in that we will be submitting and then uh, they will be reviewing that one and after examination it will be published and uh, it will be published in the public domain of that particular uh, journal website or any other paper writer so but here in uh, ipr first filing will be done and after filing publication will be done in the official website of the patent office or uh, ip offices and after publication it will be examined so only after publication it will be examined so publication is an automatic process and uh, after that examination will be done and uh, with the report of that examination after doing some procedures like uh, filing with uh, exam uh, replying the exam replying to the examination report and then uh, after that uh, hearing will be there and after all these uh, formal uh, prosecution then it may be or uh, granted or may not be granted we can say it as grant or registered the pattern is said to be granted and the remain some of the ips is said to be registered design and layout uh, semiconductor ip layout design also said to be in registered but patent we are call it as a granted so after examination the ips can be either grant or registered and after that uh, we have to review it for up to their uh, lifetime uh, like expiry time of each ip so uh, there is a different date for uh, each ip in order to get extended so until then we have to uh, renew it every year by paying it corresponding fees this is common to all ip and after that uh, renewal particularly in a patent ip we will be having the technology transfer as well as commercial in order to make it into a product everyone so uh, except this technology transfer and commercialization all these uh, nine steps will be common for all ip so so next we can go to the some introduction of patent so patent actually normally innovation comes from necessity when we need some uh, when we want to have when we need something then we will be thinking of its solution so if there is a problem then automatically solution will be there so uh, in order to solve this problem we will be searching for a solution uh, in a experimental way and by that innovation comes so i can say that the innovation comes from necessity so in india the first patentable product was uh, an efficient punka pulling machine so this was filed by depending law firm and uh, this was the machine by by which we can uh, pull out the water from the ground uh, ground water for agriculture purposes before that they are using the cow for uh, digging out the water and uh, and uh, after coming this machine the uh, it is said to be improved so uh, do, uh, the time is also said to be improved and uh, efficiency is also improving and in india we can say that it is a following the indian patent act 1970 when filing it in india i can say that uh, uh, patent is a monopoly right or it will be an exclusive right or it can be a territorial right so more right is that being a right for a particular uh, applicant for a particular applicant in order to uh, access all his benefits so and in all his benefits so also it is said to be a territorial right that means that if i am filing it in india then i have the right only for marketing that product only in india not in other countries so if you want to have a market of that particular product in other countries then you have to file a 
that particular application in that particular country where you need to have market so it indicates that it is a territorial right that is if you are filing it in india then your patent has its rights only in india not in other countries so you are having a eligibility of this patent rights only in india so we can say, define this patent as a techno legal rights so it indicates the technical as well as the legal part so you can say it is a techno legal rights and it is given by the government of india to the inventor over a specified time period so this specified time period is 20 years and it is common for all, all over the world so it is the right will be given by the government to the inventor for a specified period of 20 years and it, and they are given this rights for creating of for the creation of invention that provides a new technical solution to a problem so it should be a new technical solution so if there is no if it was not a new then it will not be able to be granted and also it includes some technical features for a, solving a particular problem so we can say that it was a technical legal, techno legal right given by the government to the inventor over a specified time period for the creation of invention that provides that new technical solution to the problem and by having this right we can make uh, we can prevent others from making using selling offering for sale or importing so it indicates that we are getting the right only for 20 years and within that right we can uh, within that time period we can use or make the product or we can sell the product or we can offering for sale or importing also so these are the benefits of getting a patent for grant and uh, a patentability criteria was there um, so you can say that wipo world intellectual property organization so this is the base for uh, designing all these uh, we laws rules and regulations but every country is following the rules of this uh, wipo world intellectual property organization and even india is following that based on that rules we are also designing this in 1970 and uh, as per that um, ipo there are certain patentability criteria and uh, there are four different patentability criteria uh, first is that following the local laws so it since i have said that it was a territorial right so a right has been given to that particular territorial region of a country so each country is having their certain local rules and they have to follow that rule it may differ from india and us also in certain cases so it in order to get a patent in india we have it has to follow the local rules or laws of uh indian patent act so that local law has was defined in uh, the section 3 and 4 of indian patent act 1970 and apart from the local laws there are three major criteria for getting a patent and it is common to all all over the world so first is the novelty we can also say it as a non anticipated it should be new an inventive step non obviousness and industrial applicability so if a patent application is satisfying all these four criteria then it is eligible for patent and the patent office will also be granted according by checking all these criteria and let me in brief i will be explaining these uh, all these features and uh, and after that let me go to this uh, uh, searching part first is the novelty novelty as you know that it should be new and it should not be published or used or known or available or worked across the world in any form so i am saying that is across the world across the world is that uh, even though the right is of territorial but uh, it should not be published or it should be novel it respect to across the world that is searching will be done all over the world if you are uh, if you are inventing and apply uh, if you are doing an invention and if the same concept was already used or published in us then it was not eligible for patent in india so uh, even if uh, if the product was not available in india also then it was not eligible since we, uh, the patent office will be searching for its novelty criteria across the world not only in india so uh, it has to satisfy that it should not publish anywhere in india or used or known or available or work anywhere in india anywhere in the world not only restricted to india but the rights is restricted to territorial basis so right after applying after searching and then applying and then after granting but the rights will be defined confined only to the territorial but in, in the starting it should not be available across the world 
so this was given in the section 21 of l and uh, here i have given certain uh, examples of this novelty so uh, first figure in the top left uh, this indicates i can say that it was a single rod metallic rod so uh, actually the invention can be a simple or complex even we can say that this was a simple in invention but that can also be patentable so this was just an example of that one so this was just a metallic rod it was a metallic rod and then in the left bottom uh, can anyone say what is this one hello am i audible madam audible madam please proceed okay, okay so i am asking the participant to answer uh, if they are allowed to unmute themselves stitching needle madam okay so for bottom left is the stitching needle so uh, and uh, bottom middle was the machine needle Stitching machine needle, madam. Okay, That this one. is in machine needle. One. Okay, so yes, in machine needle. Okay, so what is the difference between these two one? How can we say that it will be a novel or new? Both are needles. Both are used for stitching. Now, how can we say that it was novel? The shape, madam. By shape. Seed. The shape of the needle, madam. Shape, shape of the needle. Uh, are you speaking of the shape of the needle? Thickness and diameter of the needle. Diameter. Okay, then. If if the uh, if any pro if any product was. Uh, have a difference only in the shape means then that IP will be kind of an industrial design. So uh, I can say the difference between the thread insertion. Yes, ma'am. The thread inserting part also, madam. Thread. Ah, okay. That, yeah. ah, so threading part uh, that that is the novel feature here. So I can say that this was the novel feature. So if it was uh, new only to the eye, means eye appearance of eye of, of our eye means then it has to be go to the industrial design. If it has something inventive feature, then we can go it for a pattern. So that is the main difference between the pattern IP and design IP, industrial design IP. The industrial design IP will be having just a uh, look of that. After that look, if you are uh, satisfying and if it seems to be a novel, then the design, industrial design IP will be provided. But in uh, pattern, it has an it, it needs an additional features apart from that uh, visualization also. So uh, as said uh, one of your participants, I can say that uh, the thread needle where we are inserting it is said to be a novel feature, and due to that application is also differing. Even though it was an applied for stitching, but by the machine and it this is by the hand. So I can see that the needle the hole was there in a metallic rod. So I can say from the previous case as a metallic rod, the first case. So I am starting from this metallic rod. So I can say that uh, you someone was making uh, making a hole at one side of a metallic rod and the other side to be in a sharpened edge. Then we can make that metallic rod to be a uh, used for stitching. Okay. So this was the novel feature of a simple metallic rod. So we are saying that it was it is having a um, hole in one part, one side of the rod, and in the opposite side, it is having certain sharp edges. Okay, so in the second bottom, uh, I'll be saying that if for a sewing machine needle, sharp hole is seen on the same side of the sharp edge. So that was the main thing, that was the novel feature. So both are using the same metallic rod, both are having the sharp edge as well as this hole for inserting the needle, the thread. Uh, but the way of locating this thread is uh, way of locating the location of this hole seems to be that it is differing in the application work. So that's why I'm saying that a metallic rod having a sharpened edge on one side and the hole on the same side will provide, will be used for the stitching. So if it was in this manner, then this is said to be a novel work. Okay. 
and then uh, bottom right what is the bottom right portion again it is a metallic rod but designed in uh, some other way for some other application and what is that can anyone can identify Okay. I can say that this is the needle for uh, uh, needle used for stitching in medical applications. Okay, so when they are after doing an operation, so in order to stitch the skin, they will be using this type of needle. Again, this is a needle, but with different application. By changing the shape, it provides a new feature. So it is said to be a novel when compared to the first two. Okay, same needle but different patterns are there. So you can say that this is a simple metallic rod by making that rod to be bent in a U shape and making one head to be a sharpened head. So in order by this construction features, then we can make this uh, needle to be used for stitching the skin in during the medical operation. Then we can say that this is a new feature when compared with the existing uh, needle of uh, used for stitching and in and in sewing. Okay, what is the top uh, right? What is the top right? Top right image is the top right is the image is the it is the needle of uh, used ah yes so it is the needle used for uh, syringe needle ah uh, syringe needle so it is used. This need this type of needle is used for uh, inserting the drug into the body. Okay, we can say that it is a syringe needle, and uh, it was used for uh, inserting the drug into our body after do, during the medical treatment. So uh, this is also a simple metallic rod, and it is also a sharpened edge one on one side, but it seems to be an hollow shape. So if it was, if we make it as a hollow metallic rod. And make it in a, a sharpen at one edge, then we can use it for a, uh, delivering the drug into the body. Okay, so these are the some new features from a metal rod. So you can also think of that invention can not only come from a bigger uh, experimental work; it also comes even if you are ha having if you are developing your ideas, even from a new uh, simple work also. So. Uh, this was one of the thing uh, uh, defining the novelty criteria and the other is the inventive step inventive step is the second uh, criteria basic criteria for uh, getting a pattern application so uh, inventive step is non obvious to a person skilled in the art so non obvious means it is not clear to a person skilled in the art it indicates that if i am a background from electronics and communication engineering then uh, if i know that this particular device will be operating like this if some device is operating in a specific manner that was known to part all the field uh, all the people who are from the communication engineering background then uh, if a new invention is coming out then we have to identify we have to write in a drafting way that it uh, that it should it will it should not be clear to a person skilled in the art that is if a person is already knowing that knowledge if he could not able to identify then the our drafting is, is it should be in such a way that so i can say that uh, while drafting a pattern application it should not be obvious to a person skilled in the art so already a person knowledgeable person in that particular field should not recognize easily after seeing that experiment but the after seeing the documentation work he could be able to understood what the invention exactly means that is after seeing the pro, uh, writing of the document, if a person is able to uh, do that same experiment by himself, then we can say that it is non obvious to a person skilled in the art. Okay, so this definition is given in the section 201 of uh, JA in Indian Pattern Act. So, uh, these are certain examples of this inventive step. Um, so, top three are classified in a single group and the bottom three will be classified in another group. So, what are these ones? So, these are the mobile communication devices. These are the communication devices in particular. Wire and wireless, and, madam. Uh, wire and wireless. So, so, top three is the wire and uh, bottom three is the wireless one. And first is the 
Graham Bell uh, designed this uh, phone. So this is a one-way communication. So at, at a time only one can speak and after reaching for a, a specified time, the other receiver people can able to hear this one. After receiving the uh, from the receiver side, again that person will be able to talk and then the first person can able to hear. So this is a one-way communication and we can say this is as a initial uh, device used hub for uh, communication. Uh, it was a hop duplex, so one-way communication was there. And second is the phone, wired phone, with a two-way communication, right? Yeah. So it was a full duplex. So it was a two-way communication. So in this two-way communication, one can be able to hear and that talk also, okay? And what about the third one? Third one? It is also a wired communication, similar to the second one, but it has a new feature. Uh, they have ad added some inventive features that uh, they can, uh, uh, the people who are picking the phone can identify who is talking from the other side by recognizing their number that was displayed in their uh, machine, okay? So in this device, the uh, uh, display machine was there by which one can identify who is talking from the other side. Okay? So that was, it. it is, seem to be different from the second. So first and second was that single and two-way communication was there. And from second to third, a new feature was added was that new inventive feature was added was that the uh, people uh, receiving people can also be identified. Okay. And then bottom three or the wireless communication. So uh, it is an improved one. Uh, so it, uh, it indicates that uh, in order to have a wired, we are going for a wireless so that it is easy to handle. So first is similar to your walkie-talkie. It, uh, it covers only for a smaller distance initially. And then uh, they have increased that. First, it was used for only for uh, talking purpose. And then they are sending the SMS also in the bottom. Voice plus text. Uh, voice plus text is also there. And then uh, this is also wireless. And the, also the uh, dur uh, the space is also extended, okay? And then uh, nowadays we are having the smartphones and here it includes all the features, voice, data, and the other communication network also we are using. So uh, recently 5G is also coming. So these are the new features which was added to the existing one. We can say that it was an inventive feature, okay? So with the help of the writing only, we can understood that there was new feature in that one, okay? So until then, a person skilled in the R cannot be identified how it was there. Since we had used it, we had identified the difference. But before that, uh, no one will identify after seeing these images if we are not aware of all these uh, devices, okay? So if we can in say that inventive stuff is the way of uh, writing also so that uh, it, it is not obvious to a person already skilled in the art. So next was the industrial applicability. So industrial applicability, it has certain applications. So capable of being made or being used in an industry. So this was the criteria which was particularly used in a pattern. So it has to be a capability the, in a, the application or in the invention has to be capable of being made or being to be used in an industry. So this definition is given in the section 2A of uh, Pattern Act. And these are the certain uh, examples of this industrial applicability. So we can say that uh, the first is the cup having uh, many hole handles. So even though it was new and attractive feature, it can be coming under uh, industrial design also. I can say that uh, a particular uh, uh, or uh, any IP is not restricted only to your particular IP. So anything, any product or any process can be coming for a different IP also. So this has, uh, I can say that some example as that uh, device can have both as uh, both a uh, uh, patent IP as well as design IP and also it can have the uh, copyright IP also. Suppose if you are taking the phone like uh, mobile phones, you can see that uh, there are certain innovation was there. So patent IP was there and the design of the phone gives the industrial design IP also there and the algorithm which was used for operating the phone gives the copyright also. And the company which was uh, manufacturing that phone will give the trademark. So uh, not only single IP, but it can also have many IP also. So we can say it as an IP portfolio. But here in this first figure, we can say that it was a cup having multiple handles and 
it is it is having a design also and but we cannot say that it is eligible for patent since its main application of this stuff was that have to be used for uh, drinking purpose but if there was so many handles then we cannot uh, able to differentiate and then it is difficult to take that okay so and then the bottom uh, middle bottom is that uh, umbrella having multiple holes so it was seems to be attractive for our uh, vision but it was not useful so we all know that uh, the umbrella will be used for protecting from the heat as well as light so but if it has a hole like this then it has no use so if an invention has doesn't have any use then it is not eligible for patent and similarly the third figure the car having the uh, wheel of uh, square shape okay and i can say that what can be patentable patented so either it can be a product system apparatus machine or device hello yavaro yeah, eda number hello hello So, uh, what can be patentable? Either it can be a product or a process. So you can say that product can be another term for system, apparatus, machine, or device, or it can be a process or method, or it can be a chemical composition also. Okay. So, and who can apply? So the definition of who can apply can be given in uh, under section six of Indian Patent Act, nineteen seventy, and it defines that any person, any person is a natural person and other than natural person also. Other than natural person covers the small entity, startup, and other. Others can be a large entity, or organization, or institute, or whatever it may be. So all these comes under any person. Even the organization and institution comes under any person. So under uh, other than natural person, particularly any person who are two on the first inventor, assignee of the two and first inventor, and legal representative of the inventor. So two on the first inventor is that the inventor is the uh, person who is doing an invention. So they have also the right to file by apply by themselves. And also the assignee of the two and first inventor, assignee of the two and the first inventor indicates that it can be either an uh, institution or organization on whom the inventor has been employed. Okay. If you are from a if you are from an educational institution, then the educational institution name will be an applicant since they are providing the resources and the other uh, facilities for doing that uh, innovation to be coming up. So it is help uh, it is helping in terms of resources. That's why you can say that uh, uh, these institution and organizations are the assignee of the true and first inventor. So although the inventor was been doing that one, but in some cases, uh, even the organization can also apply since by having their IPR policy between the inventor and the applicant, of, uh, applicant means uh, here in this case is the institution or the organization. So if they have the IPR policy in such a way that uh, if they are having 60-40 uh, ratios, that is 60 percentage will be going, 60 percentage of the income from the patented product is going to the Organization 40 percentage will be going to the inventor. So as per the AICT, recently in 2019, they have added these features that inventor has to be also it be repeated after uh, doing such invention. So AICT and made it a mandatory for uh, all the institution to provide certain um, benefits to the inventor also for us as well. So it can be either 60, 40 or 50, 50. In some universities, they are giving us a 50, 50 percentage figure. That is 50 percentage for the organization and 50 percentage for the inventor. Inventor can be, it, it is not restricted in, in uh, any of the pattern acts. It was not restricted that it has to be either two people or three people, whatever it may be. So at least it has to be a minimum of one people for filing an application. And it can be many, even up to 50 inventors can also be there. And also 50 applicants can also be there. Okay. So it was not restricted to a number for uh, filing this application or to be an inventor or an uh, assignee or an applicant. So there are two terms, inventor and applicant. So let me define that term in the future slide, for coming slide. And the third is the legal representative. Legal representative is... Uh, is the scenario where uh, if the inventor is in deceased field. So disease means if he was in death after that invention, then the legal representative will automatically go to their uh, belongings like um, son and daughter. Okay. 
so that uh, those people who are the legal representative and they can also file on the behalf of their invention mentioning that the the true and the first inventor has been deceased okay disease means death after that they can submit their uh, proof of their application and they can file the patent application also and this can be done either alone or jointly so alone or jointly that i said that it was not limited to or not restricted to a number of applicants okay and however that to apply so it can be either online or offline online so we can see it as a e-filing offline it is said to be a physical filing and it can be filed either in india or elsewhere in the world if you are going for elsewhere in the world then it can be a pct or convention application pct is the patent cooperation treaty and convention application is also there apart from the ordinary application yeah, really yeah. and uh, e-filing uh, uh, when compared with uh, e-filing and physical filing the difference is the fees so the difference of 10 percentage fees will be more in physical filing when compared to the e-filing um, so it can be filed in india and also in elsewhere in the world if you are filing it in india online application for that you require a digital signature anyone can apply not only a patent agent but uh, any applicant or any inventor can also apply by themselves through e-filing by creating an account in the indian patent website with the help of the digital signature okay and then uh, if you are going for an offline filing then it has to be filed in any one of the four different patent offices so according to the jurisdiction uh, it is be classified as uh, the patent office to be in mumbai chennai new delhi and kolkata in in and around chennai will be covering the states in and around chennai will have to be filed their application only in the patent office chennai so as you people in andhra pradesh college will be asked to be this must to be filed only in the patent office chennai okay so the applicant where uh, is residing in india has to be filed in according to that particular location and if suppose if, I, if one, one is from uh, gujarat then that people has to be filed from patent office mumbai okay so and all the processes until the grant has to, will be uh, will be done by that respective patent office and suppose if you are filing it in elsewhere in india through pct or convention application then uh, it has to be filed with the respective country patent office and uh, here it is the different types of patent application and this can be seen in the form 1 of uh, at the time of filing and there are three different uh, main applications types of application one is the ordinary application and the other two was the international application and before going to an international application one has to be make sure that it has to be filed only in india first and then it has to be filed in uh, other countries okay so you suppose in certain local laws if it was not eligible to be filed in india example i can say that the case like uh, if you're having an computer programs or computer algorithm or computer software the software cannot be a computer program per se as such cannot be filed cannot be eligible for patent in india so in that case if you are want to file it in us then it was eligible so us doesn't have the local laws as uh, non eligibility of this uh, patent application of computer programs as such so but india has restricted that um, it should not uh, only the computer programs alone cannot be eligible for patent application so in such cases you can apply with the permission from india that as per the local laws was not eligible uh, with respect to this local law this application can be has to be filed in other country but that has to be done with the help of the permission from an indian government okay from the indian patent office else you have to file it first in india then you can go for other uh, countries okay the other international countries it can be either a pct or conventional application and if you are filing it in india it is said to be an ordinary application and uh, apart from these three main categories there are other two category of patent of addition and division divisional and these two category two sub categories will cover for all these three major categories the okay? patent of addition is that you can file the uh, major invention in the first application and after two years if you want to do after doing certain modification if you add to add uh, need to add new feature then you can submit as a pattern of addition and divisional also if controller suppose that uh, if he wants to uh, divide an application that if he finds suits that it was fitted for two different inventors then he can also split an application that comes under divisional okay 
Then these are the important forms for patent filing in India. For form one and two is mandatory at the time of first application, time of filing. So form one is the application. Uh, it can, there we have to mention it as an ordinary application first. And the fees for filing uh, uh, normal application in India is thousand six hundred. Okay, so thousand six hundred, one thousand six hundred is the uh, filing fee. And if you know the drafting, then you can file it by even by yourself. Uh, if you are doing it in an offline also, you can take a DD of uh, rupees 1600. So recently in 2020, uh, uh, there was a change in the uh, Indian Patent Act rules. So in that rule, uh, they have mentioned that they have included the institution also. So previously it was not the category and now it has included that even an educational institute either from a government or non-government can also apply under this category. So no need to file for application with a higher payment. So fee payment. So now you can also file an application as an institute as an applicant. It can also file as with a a fees of 1600 previously it was 800 8000 and now it was 1600 now the 8000 fees is only for the large industries not for the institutions okay educational institutions comes under now the category of 1600 fees okay so five for filing an application in india uh, along with form one you have to pay 1600 and uh, along with form one you have to submit form two either it can be provisional or complete specification and there is some uh, criteria so in due to the shortage of time i am skipping this one uh, in uh, differentiating this uh, provisional and complete specification okay next form 3 form 5 8 9 18 26 27 and form all these mandatory forms and then form 4 for if you uh, if you are not supposed to file it within the specified date then you can go for a extension of time also by submitting the form 4 and I can I want to say that uh, form nine it was yearly publication and this is optional. Okay, so this is optional, but uh, many people are not aware that uh, publication is uh, called. It has to be in uh, uh, sorry. So publication has to be in uh, mandatory. So form nine has to be submitted as mandatory. Is not an, is said to be not a mandatory. It is an optional. It can file. You can file form 9 as yearly publication and it is an optional with the fees of 2500 for an organization. If not, also it will be published automatically. So let me explain that in this slide, ordinary application timeline. So at the month of zero, you'll be filing the provisional and within 12 months, you have to submit the complete specification. And within 12 months, since it is within one year, you have to submit this complete specification and 18 months, it is automatically published. So no need to file, uh, submit form 9 in this case. Okay. So form after 18 months, uh, the application will be automatically published in the official gazette or uh, official journal of Indian pattern office. Okay. If not, also, if you are not submitting form 9, also, it will be published after 18 months. Suppose if you want to publish it earlier, then you have to submit form 9. Okay. So form 9, if you are submitting today, then by next month, it will be published. If not, also, then it will be published after 18 months from the filing date. So filing date is the important one. This is the important one. So that's why you have to file it uh, before, before submitting a uh, paper publication, either in journal or uh, conference. Once it was submitted in conference or uh, journal, then it is not eligible to file it in India or also in anywhere in country, okay, in the world. So just first do a, a pattern filing and then go for a journal or conference publication. Even your uh, published journal and uh, conference paper will be a hindrance for granting your pattern application, okay. So it will be a one prior art for your previous application. So better file a pattern application first, then go for your publication. If it was published in public domain, then it was not eligible for a pattern application until uh, uh, in, in, in one special uh, exception case. So that exception is that if you are submitting, if you are uh, disclosing your invention in an exhibition that was organized and was published in an official budget, if that announcement was in official gazette, then you have the time of one year to file that application. Else, it will not be uh, published. If it was published earlier, then it will not be eligible for filing a pattern application. And uh, 
after 18 months then in the within 4 years that is 48 months we have to file a file request for examination that is given in form 18 here so form 18 4000 it is also mandatory yearly publication is not mandatory but uh, form 18 is said to be mandatory it can be submitted either at the first instant or at the before the first year of uh, your pattern application so before 48 months you have to submit this request for examination until and unless you are submitting this form then your application will not be examined okay so if it was not examined then it will not be grant, granted okay so all the publication indicates that if it was published we cannot say that it was uh, that uh, you are getting the right so it was not uh, uh, conditions that after publication you are getting all the rights so it was not true so until and unless it was granted you are not getting any rights okay so don't go uh, don't stop up to the publication go for the examination and other prosecution also and after it was granted then the patent uh, right will be for 20 years 20 years is from the filing date so not from the grant date so it will be from filing date from the starting uh, if i'm filing it the application in 2020 then uh, and if it was granted in uh, 2030 then after that you had 10 years that is 2020 to 2040 up to that you have the patent right and after that it will be going to the public and uh, you will not have any rights over that one. and uh, i think i can uh, so uh, that now we'll let with uh, another thing so uh, uh, how how long it can take sir hello um, next uh, uh, in the 20 minutes. Huh? Hello. Ah, so now only I am going to start the pattern searching and uh, up to what time I can take? Uh, ma'am, till 11.30 ma'am. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So, and before that, let okay, me try to you, complete this one. Okay. Thank you. Sure, sure, ma'am. Sure, ma please. Yeah. Okay. So uh, next, we are going to the main part of this uh, program, uh, patent thing. I have given some introduction of about the patent search. So why we going for uh, searching, and what is the requirement for searching? Suppose if you are do, if you're not doing any search, then after doing experimentation, if we find that uh, it was already there, then all our effort of experimentation will go waste. So before doing any experimental work, we'll be going for literature survey. And similarly, here also go for a pattern search and then you can do your you can start your research. So that it will not be intellectual uh, time, it will not be wasted after that if it was an existing one so better to go for a search first and start your work so that is the need of the search and for doing any search uh, so uh, it has certain reasons so without reason no one will be searching so and uh, it has to be search
Hello, am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. You are audible, but uh, the screen is not visible. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. It seems that I was disconnected. No. Okay. No problem. Me? No problem. Yeah, I think uh, it is shared. Uh, it is shared right now. Can you make it as a full screen, ma'am? Okay. Maybe due to network issue, it was been disconnected. Okay. No problem. No. No problem. No problem. Thank you, ma'am. It is. Uh, it is with the introduction screen of searching. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, um, for pattern searching, uh, as I said, that there should be certain reason and uh, with some keyword also. So, uh, I have given an example here that uh, searching a needle in the haystack is difficult. Okay. So, searching a needle in a, similarly, if I say that searching a needle in a haystack or a missing person in a city is, is difficult to find that purple or a needle. So uh, we have to say that uh, place where it was uh, being missed on that time and also certain keywords that uh, some description of that particular person and what dress he was wearing and the appearance. If some keyword was there, then it is better to, uh, to uh, track him soon or else uh, and also it requires certain resources. Uh, without resources, we cannot be able to search. Similarly, here also in the pattern also, there is there should be some reason and where to search and uh, uh, during a, what duration we have to do for searching and there's some keywords, also some um, resources need for this. So uh, we can say that these are certain purposes which are used for pattern searching. So these are the purpose of pattern searching in order to plan for a new business. So if, uh, if, you, if you want to start a new business, then you go for a pattern search and then start with that particular product business. Since if suppose if we uh, are having certain, uh, if we have started a business without a searching, then if that product is already uh, in the market and if someone is having their patented one, then they may file a case against them since we are, uh, we are stealing that uh, their uh, price, okay? So uh, better to have a pattern search before starting a new business. And then also for uh, extending this existing business also you can do a pattern search. Suppose if I had a, already have a company, pen company, pen manufacturing company. So I want to extend it to a pen cap manufacturing. Then in order to do that also, I have to go for a pattern search. So that if someone was already doing and uh, do, have their pattern with pen cap or not. If it's so, then I, I, I'll not, I'll be, I'll not be uh, doing that business, or else if they may, if they, they may file a case against me. In such cases, if you require their other uh, patented product, then you can go for a cross licensing. What I have mentioned in the last point, so you can go for a cross licensing also. That is, uh, you can uh, do a license with them that uh, without your pen, their pen cap will also not be going to a market, and uh, with your pen. Uh, without that pen cap also, sometimes it may be difficult for your pen to also to go to the market. So in that case, if two businessmen is going to have a cross licensing also, in that case, also pattern searching will be uh, helpful. And also to in order to reduce the risk of infringement, uh, infringement is that um, for suing the case against them. So in order to reduce that infringement, risk of infringement, we can go for a pattern search. And also for R&D development also, research and development also, you can go for a pattern search. After doing research, if you find that that research work is already in that, uh, in that it is a known one, then it was not eligible for pattern application and all your effort and work will be going with. That's why before starting any research work and if you want to make it to be a industrial product one, then go for a pattern search and then do your research. And so that you can identify up to what extent you can have, you can protect your invention and up to what extent the others have their rights. So that it will be useful in your future work also. And also to protect and defend also you can use it. If uh, someone was suing a case against uh, your product that it was there, 
there one then you can also in order to defend their uh, statement you can also go for a pattern search according to this purpose uh, there will be a different type of pattern search and as a result of uh, as a final result of this pattern searching was that it will be getting certain technical knowledge uh, that uh, you will be getting that up to what extent the research work was going on similarly what you are doing with a literature survey paper literature survey so after going to a literature survey you have you get you got an idea that uh, uh, from where you have to start and uh, up to where uh, the already it was there in the market so it gives up technical knowledge and also to avoid infringing losses also you can go for a pattern search and also to identify the competitor in case of a businessman and for legal enforcement if there is any enforcement against you then you can in order to face that enforcement you can also do for a pattern search and also it will identify the status of the pattern info this i'll be explaining you after showing it in a real time scenario so you are identify you can you can identify that uh, whether the pattern is in force or it was uh, in open to public or it was abandoned pattern or whatever it may be since you, all you know that pattern is for 20 years the right is for 20 years so uh, if it was for 20 years then you can uh, have to renew it up to 20 years and if you are not renewing it then your pattern will be abandoned and anyone can use it in their market and it will be going to a public domain so and also after 20 years it will be going to a public domain and in order to identify the status of that particular pattern then you can go for a pattern search and then also for doing an analysis like business trend about your uh, patented product suppose you have a product that is said to be in a patented one and you can identify how the business was there for the last 10 years and also for the forthcoming years also you can identify how will be the business if you are starting with that patented one so in order to uh, find the trends in the business you can do this analysis also with the help of the pattern search report and uh, so uh, so we need some keywords so in order to get that keyword uh, there are certain information from a pattern application and these are the six basic uh, types of uh, information that can be found in a pattern application the first is the date the date can be either a priority date application date publication or grant date whatever it may be so there are four different dates and by which you can identify the information about a pattern and also the origin origin indicates the country where it has been filed suppose it was also an important one suppose if you find that your product is uh, eligible and marketed only in india then it is better to file only in india or suppose if you product can go to a market in a successful way if you are filing it in us then you can go for filing it in us also through an international application else then it was not needed for wasting your money and energy okay so suppose if i'm having a sweater so if i'm having a product related to a sweater and if that sweater will be used only in the cold season or winter season or the region where there will be an extreme cold region then your product will be useful in that case if i want to have a market in the south africa in the hottest region then your product will not go to your market even if you are it even if it was a new or a, a, patentable criteria feature even if it is having then you are not getting any market over that particular location of country then it was not needed to file in that particular country so according to the origin also you can search and uh, by that you can identify whether your product will go to that market in that uh, scenario or not so in order to identify the market position of your patent or product you can go with the country search also so for that the origin of the country is needed and patent family is that if you are uh, if you are filing a simple a single application in india and also you are filing the same application in other country also it will be coming under this patent family okay patent family indicates that the portfolio of all your patent in that has been filed in various countries and the names of the inventor and applicant will has been be seen in the patent document so what is the difference between the inventor and applicant name so inventor is the name uh, given to the uh, name to the people who are who are really the two and the first inventor okay? so uh, those who had invented this a product that is said to be an inventor and applicant is that uh, who are the assignee of this inventor 
if the institute or organization is an applicant then there will be an uh, it, they may be said to be an applicant in that case all the rights will be going only to the applicant not to the inventor so rights will be going only to the applicant not to the inventor so what are the rights of patent it can be either able to uh, sell manufacture or import or offer to sell so these are the some rights of an applicant all this right will be going to an applicant only not to an inventor okay so that was the main difference between an inventor and applicant name and other than that uh, there was certain codes what we call it as an ipc and cpc code ipc indicates the international patent classification code and cpc is the cooperative patent classification code ipc will be following in all over the world and cpc will be following in us and european patent office so uh, across the world we will be following this ipc code and uh, this is just the classification of your patent application according to the some major sections like according to the subjects subject area area of uh, invention okay the next is the number so there are four different numbers you can identify from a given patent application it is the uh, application number application number patent number and cpt number is also there for an international application and apart from this five categories you can have the keyword keyword means it can be the word from a title abstract complete description claims and drawing claims actually a important part of a uh, patent application and in this you, uh, you are uh, identifying that what has to be protected so this indicates the inventive feature and what you need to be protected has to be uh, explained in the claim part okay and that has to be supported with the drawing so this drawing claim all be covered in a complete description and apart from that we will be having a title and abstract and with the help of using that keyword that was used in this all these five categories to that one we can also do a patent search so these are the different types of patent searching there are four different types of patent searching one is the novelty and other is the freedom to operate validity invalidity and landscape search so that novelty is also said to be a patentability search and uh, you will be listing certain uh, key elements of your disclosed invention and this search will be done by the examiners of the patent offices and also even by the researchers and uh, this will be done uh, at the time of before writing a file uh, or writing a fi or filing a patent application and second is the freedom to operate so freedom to operate is called it as fco or clearance search so this will be done mainly with the claim part of a complete specification and uh, this will be used for a business in order to avoid the risk of infringement so from there they can one can identify that up to what level they can do their business so that indicates the freedom to operate that is if one wants to start a new business and if they are going to this fco search then they have an idea that up to what extent uh, already the product was in market and uh, at what extent they can uh, it, uh, they can do their business okay The next is the validity and invalidity. Validity and invalidity is search, and uh, this indicates for uh, identification whether the patent is valid or not. And normally, this will be done after the grant, and this will be done with the help of the uh, description part. Okay, uh, it can be done by the competitor, patentee, or licensee also. So, in order to realize that whether it was really working or not, normally when uh, after filing a patent application, the patent office will not do an experimental work to Uh, in order for giving a grant, so they just need the uh, they just do the criteria, patentable criteria in that four cases whether it is following the local laws, novelty, inventive step, and that application satisfy industrial applicability. So once these four criteria are satisfied, then they will be uh, giving a patent grant. they will not be checking whether it was working or not if it was not working then the people who are filed will be getting a loss uh, by paying its renewal fee monthly so after 4 uh, to 5 years the renewal fee will be more so in order to pay the renewal fees it has to be worked suppose if you are paying the renewal fee without earning or without getting economy from that particular patented product then it will be a loss to your business that's why uh, before going to uh, renewal you have to identify whether it was working or not so that but that was not a case for a patent office to check so in order to realize it's working after grant the competitors can also do this validity search 
and you know if they are filing a case against that whether it was not working then we have to while the applicant has to the patentee has then has to do an invalidity search in order to make that statement to be false okay the next is the landscape it was also said to be a state of art search so it will be done either with the bibliographic information and this will be done with the beginners of the researcher and this also to identify the technology trend over a bit time period okay how the trend will be and uh, what are the existing one and how to where to start the research and this can be done with the help of this landscape uh, searching okay so these are the general steps in patent searching there are six different steps first we have to identify the subject matter claims and the country where it has been uh, filed or uh, where we need to do a market all these things and then uh, we have to identify the feature of an invention so what our invention was that uh, so what the feature we need to product and whether it was already in the market or not so you have to identify the important feature of an invention and for that we required this uh, identification of keywords so as i said that it can be taken either from uh, patent application or from ipc or cpc code or the inventor name other categories also and uh, step four we are having uh, developing a search strategy so we have to we have to develop a search strategy by which we have to doing for a searching so that is the uh, how we are going to so the combination of all these uh, all these things and the step five is the identifying the relevant prior art and then finally to analyze the relevant prior art so these are certain patent queries so while doing a patent search uh, you will be doing with the truncation operation that is star and the uh, dollar sign star will be used for us patent office search so a suppose example if i am giving an analyze analyze can be written as a n a l y s e or z e by some people okay and uh, uh, the the pattern application which was covering all the word related to the analyzation analyze analyze analyzes all they have to be covered so no uh, uh, no pattern has to be left over so that in order to do that the efficient searching we are going for this truncation Uh, truncation is that uh, if you are doing, if you are putting certain asterisk symbol at the end of your word, then it indicates that after that word, if any word is coming like um, uh, is it A P I O N, is it E D, is it E or uh, S I S, all these uh, pattern application with this word can also be included in our search. Another is the wild card character. It's also in question mark or uh, ask mark. This dollar sign and question mark will be used in the U S pattern office search. So here it was a single character search. Single character is suppose if you are doing an analysis, so someone may use as yes and someone may use as is. So both applications should not be avoided. So in such cases, you can do for this wild card search. Wild card search is for particularly for a single character search, and truncation is for a multiple character search at the end of the search. Okay. So next is the proximity search. Proximity search it can be near or near bar n. So near bar n, n can be any of your uh, numerals. Suppose if I am doing a result near analysis, uh, in such cases, uh, some pattern application may be written as uh, result to be analyzed or analysis result, result or uh, result analysis. The word which was uh, in between this result and analysis can also be included with this near. Okay, near bar. Suppose if I am including two. near bar to then it indicates the result near bar to analyzes that indicates that uh, two words can be exist between these terms as a result and analyzes that will be also in, covered in our search okay it doesn't mean that it uh, uh, should have a exact word as result analyzes or analyzes to be done with the help of result in this has also be included in the research uh, part, search part next is the boolean operator you can use and or not xr in indian patent office you will be having only and or not okay and then a combination of all these four type can also be used and uh, there was at in cases like punctuation and special characters or not required suppose if you are using the ISO 9001 uh, in general we will be writing that as i.s.o 9001 So while doing a pattern search, it was not needed that you have to include these dots wow. and punctuation and uh, special characters.
ipo and ipo for indian pattern office ipo for european pattern office ipo is also there for international pattern application search and others was something like uh, fipo for uh, Chinese pattern office, the PO for pattern, and Japanese pattern office, and also you are having for uh, African countries as well as Canadian pattern office is also there. So you can do, uh, uh, this is also your free sites, okay? All these official types of free databases where you can do for your uh, pattern search. And apart from this, you can also yeah. have a Google pattern also, patterns.google.com, similar to your uh, Google search, you are having a pattern Google searching also, and Pattern lens was there, free pattern online was there, it was all of private, uh, private category. And uh, paid data business is also there with the help of Thompson oh, Innovation oh, Pastel. Oh. Having the trend for particular 10 years, how the market will be, and top 10 countries uh, in this particular field of uh, uh, inventory, and then for top 10 applicant, who are the top 10 applicant in that particular. <laughs> Uh, search all this can be done in an analytical tool and this can be seen in global pattern index it global pattern index and then the third category pattern lens uh, these two are from european pattern office and this is a paid one also you can get a one month trial version also after including after creating an account of username and password you can get a free trial version for one month also and the pattern inspiration and optimization it is the private search. Okay. And I have given certain types of uh, certain examples over here. Let me, uh, as I'm running short of time, I think after showing certain examples, then I will be closing this session. So let me explain this uh, with the help of uh, real time search. Okay. So So these are the pattern classification code. As I already said, this was a pattern classification code. Actually, there are two, eight sections was there. So pattern of the wiper had uh, classified these as a eight classes of human necessity application will be coming under A, all these things. Suppose if I'm taking this H, H, so H, there are also, this was the sections and other were are classes. So let me show these classes. Zero one is the class name. So basic electrical elements will be identified here. Suppose if I am um, if I am uh, designing an inductor and if I am doing a, a pattern application in that one in the application related to the inductance, then your application will be class classified by the pattern office with the category of H01. Yes, H indicate for electricity and 01 is the class under this uh, section and f is the subclass so under this also there are many cat subclasses are there so these are the group and subgroups so group and subgroup can be identified by three bar zero zero you can take these uh, from by google it in uh, pattern classification code in uh, google you can also get this one okay so you can also see this So you can also uh, have this uh, search even by Google it as uh, pattern classification code, you can find this. So, uh, so these are certain, with this also you can also do the search, okay. So next, uh, let me. This was the Indian Pattern Office, uh, so one can. Also. So this was the public search and after that you are going for a pattern so i actually this site 